Hello, my name is Sarah Acklam and I'm the Compliance Coordinator for Forever Living. This training is designed to give you an overview of the complexity involved in this area. There's a lot of detail which we won't be covering, but what we are going to be looking at is what is compliance, why you should be compliant in any advertising and promotional materials you might want to create, and then we're going to look at the kind of laws that affect this, the kind of claims that you can fall foul of very easily, and then the myths that are out in the field that you again might fall foul of. We're also going to take a look at eBay specifically, we're going to touch on social media, and then we're going to end with looking at the future of compliance. Compliance is about helping you, helping you in your business. There are many UK laws that affect both our industry and our products that we need to abide by. We also have to abide by new EU laws that have come in recently. There are direct selling association rules that as a member company we need to abide by. And then there's our own company policy, which is ever evolving to new situations and new emerging media. So what does compliance cover? Firstly, we're here to help you with any advertising, any promotional material that you might create for yourself. This could be an advert for a magazine, a newspaper, it could be a flyer to put through a door, it could be an email that you wish to send to all your customers. But anything that you create yourself, you should send to head office for approval. This is to protect you, it's so that you don't need to know all those details. We'll cover that for you. You just need to send it in to us and we will do the rest for you. Then there's the company literature. We need to make sure as a company that we're compliant, so compliance gets involved with writing those descriptions and making sure that it does adhere to UK and EU law. Then there are websites. Currently, company policy allows you to create a business opportunity website of your own, but if you want a product-related website, then you need to take up one of our templated websites. Now, this can be either via foreverliving.com, a my FLP biz website, which gives you a choice of templates and the ability to change information and add information, or there's a two-page static website you can take up via Forever Knowledge, and this will give you a very basic shopping page and business page where you can add your contact information. If you do create your own website, again, this does need to be sent to head office for us to check and make sure that it is legal and compliant. Compliance also looks at third-party websites. Now, currently, company policy does not allow you to place product promotions on third-party websites such as eBay and Amazon. You can, however, place business opportunity adverts via a third-party site. Then there's also social media which we're only going to touch on today, but compliance is having to look at this area in a lot more detail now because of emerging laws in this area. Then there are other situations where you can and where you can't sell, i.e. shops. Compliance also looks at the grey lines between those areas and providing advice to distributors about the places they can sell and the places they really can't. We also provide advice on company policy, again specifically where you can and can't sell and the kind of things you can do in your business. An example of this recently was we were asked about pop-up shops. Was that a retail situation or more a temporary craft fair situation? Again, a grey area, but we took the decision that that is a retail situation. So any place that you would like to sell or something new you would like to do in your business, we can help you define within company policy whether you can do that. So why should you be compliant in your business? Why should you be concerned with this area? Ultimately, you as a distributor, an independent distributor, can be held responsible and prosecuted for anything you do in the business that is against the law. But also, the company can be held responsible for what you do as a distributor as well. Now there are many bodies that actually police this area. It's not just one body that we have to be concerned with. These bodies 
are bodies such as the Advertising Standards Association that may contact us about adverts that are going out in the press, the Committee for Advertising Practice who look at websites and any kind of activity on the web, the Medicines Healthcare Regulatory Agency. Now that's a very big body that can actually stop us from trading in the UK and remove our products from the shelves if the wrong things are being said about those products. Then there's trading standards as well, local and national. It's very easy to fall foul of local trading standards officers who may be going around your local markets and seeing the kind of adverts that you're putting out. Then there's the Veterinary Medicines Directorate who are very hot on looking at animal websites particularly. Then we have local county councils, solicitors who may enforce individuals' rights and finally even the police if it comes to strong medical claims. But these bodies, they all have different ideas as well with regards to the law. So an example of this is recently we had to amend our description of our jelly and we made it compliant with the Committee of Advertising Practice, but the Medicines Healthcare Regulatory Agency weren't happy with the description. We then made it compliant with the MHRA and CAP didn't like it. And it took a while to get them both to agree to a description. It's a very, very complicated area.